All right, so a year ago we made this wine from a date syrup because people told us we should. And hey, it's been a year. Don't agitate it, please. I want to talk about that. It's at 1.024 final gravity and it's 13%. And I don't know how well you can see it, but there is a fine yeah, layer of sediment on the bottom here. It's about the thickness of my finger. And we did notice when we made this, it was very, very, very thick. So this just goes to show that over time, it does keep changing. This is part of the aging process. Those proteins reformulate, they break apart, they reformulate, and sometimes they fall out of suspension. That's a lot, it's a little unusual. So if you have a brew and you see that there is a layer of something on the bottom of your brew, please do not freak out, do not throw that away. Yeah. That's just a sign of things settling out of fermentation. Now, if you have some copious amounts of fuzzy weirdness up top. That's different. That's different, then you probably have mm -hmm. a problem. But looking at the top here, I see just a minute, like a little bit of the oils maybe uh, on the top. Other than that, nothing. Yeah. Everything looks good. But you know what we haven't done in a long time? The pour cam. So the first thing of note is this looks like mud. It's super thick still, even with all that like sediment coffee. coming off. It's, it looks like coffee. Yeah, yeah. It's really dark, but if you tilt it slightly and look through you can the top edge, you can see clarity. I cannot see my I finger through it. I think it's it, just super As you get dark. like right up towards the edge, yeah, it's, I'm gonna say it's a little cloudy too. It's, it's not clear, which also explains more of the stuff falling out. It smells like coffee, like super syrup. It, it smells like coffee and dates to me. It's really thick, really heady, really syrupy in the aroma. It tastes like a, it smells like a liqueur. It smells not like a, wine. a liqueur. Yeah, absolutely. It's definitely got some dark fruit though. Like I'm getting like a prune. Yeah. Caramel, like a, a smoky caramel almost. Yeah, it reminds me of a boche. Yes, very I, much so. I, I want to feel like I said this before. I don't recall though. I don't know. We don't go back and watch on purpose. That way there's no bias. We're a clean slate. All right, so you ready to taste this? Yeah. Clink, clink. That is really interesting. It really is a liqueur. This is like an aperitif. You have this after a dinner with dessert or after dessert. On dessert? Oh yeah, it's like a syrup. On ice cream, this would be fantastic. Okay, we, we talk about a, uh, the balance. Sweetness, acid, and tannin. This is, has enough tannin to give you a good mouthfeel. It has enough sweetness to overcome the strong acidity that is actually in this. Much stronger than I would have expected. This but is the not, balance plays nice. This is not a delicate, gentle beverage. No, this is a knock you in the mouth this type is of beverage. To grab you by the throat and shake you around for now, a little I'm bit. I'm pretty sure it kicks you in the teeth, then pulls your teeth back out and hits you again with them. I mean, and then it throws each tooth at you individually. It's This is nuts. But then you're like, Hey, that was but you like it. kinda nice. <laughs> you say, thank you, sir, may I have another? All I'm tasting is vanilla, caramel, dark fruit, dates, coffee, chocolate even. Mm -hmm. Wow, so many flavors. I don't think we liked this quite this much when it was young. No, we did not. But this, honestly, this tastes kinda like, there's a drink that I make, a cocktail, where I take Kraken rum, and Kahlua. And Kahlua. This tastes a lot like that. Yep. All, like it's so close to Kahlua and rum together. Yeah, and going on my initial of wanting to put this over ice cream, I kind of want to make a Kahlua and cream style cocktail mm -hmm. with this and just add some cream to it. If you condense this down, make it thick. Oh, wow, this would be an amazing sauce. But as a wine, it's not successful. Mm -mm. This is not wine anymore. This is a, a liqueur, an aperitif. Very unique, very different. This this is like in a category of its own. It is 13%, so it's got a kick. It's not the highest ever. I wonder if we were to fortify this with like a brandy or something, 
to get it up into the 25 or 27 percent range. Well, I'm sure everybody's done with watching me pour Cointreau into stuff. Oh, you want me to pour some brandy in? Maybe we could pour some brandy in it for science. After we do the scoring, I will do that. I don't, well, I don't want to ruin the scoring, you know? It's important. <laughs> People like to know the Drew Carey numbers that don't matter and don't count for anything anyway. But this, okay, let me, let me take you on, on a journey here because it's, it's quite a trip. Okay, on the entrance, the first thing I get is sort of a, a tannic coffee that instantly turns into like the coffee berry. Like it's got a, a dark, deep fruit that isn't super sweet, but there's just a touch of sweetness there. And then as it enters the mouth, I get the vanilla and the caramel smokiness. And then there's this richness that just fills the palate. It just, boom, explodes yeah. in your mouth. And it's powerful flavors that you just can't, you can't not taste it, okay? Like sometimes you go, mm, yeah, yeah. this, you can't help but taste it. And that's when the dark chocolate and coffee flavors really build. And then on the finish, it turns back into this dark fruit thing again. Never overly sweet, never overly acidic, never overly tannic. Because at a 1024 Final Gravity, this is sweet, okay? This is considered sweet, but it doesn't taste anything close to a 1024. It, it, it has such a beautiful balance, and I don't think it tasted that good when we first made it. it I, this is a very different beverage from when we first made it. Yeah, and uh, my tongue was doing the tingly thing, reminding me of, of Dad critiquing that one brew, saying that it made his, his tongue mm -hmm. happy. It's, it's got a lot going on. She likes to say an experienced beverage. This is experience plus. Yeah. Yeah, this is this is up there. So um, I I don't even know how to score this one. Because it's a wine, but it's not, it doesn't taste like a wine. It tastes like somebody made us a cocktail. It really does. But we have to judge it on its own merit. So here's the way our scoring goes. It's a one through ten scale. In other words, you can't go below one. And we generally don't go above ten unless it's an eleven, in which case that's just an exceptional thing. The stars align, you know, it's just a wonderful thing. So one being absolute crap, you're probably gonna dump it out. But we won't because we're gonna show you those ones. Ten means it's probably the best thing you've ever made or the best thing you have currently. Um, we have done a couple of 11s and Derek still needs to make the, the list so that I can do a quick little video and show you guys what one's got an 11. So basically between one and 10 means uh, ick to awe. So awe being A-W-E, like as in awesome. So it's ick to awe. <sighs> I don't know. This, this defies... It defies a number. It defies a number. All right, I, I, I have a score. I'm... I'm going between a couple different numbers. I'm going to be a radical. Why? Because I can. That's why. All right. One, two, three, nine. Six. Whoa! Now, Daria, you, you went on with Brian and saying how wonderful this. Why the heck did you give it a six? Well, I was very close to giving it to a five. And the reason being is that I can't drink this without instantly thinking, what am I going to add to this? Oh. Because it is so powerful. It is so in your face. It is so aggressive. That's why I like it. <laughs> that I'm just like, whoa there, big guy, hold your horses. You're, you're encroaching on my personal space. And so I want to add other things to it so I can enjoy all the wonderfulness that this is. Just take him back a notch or See, five. What I would put to put in this is an ice ball. I would put this in a glass with an ice ball, and that would be incredible to me. But I have concerns that the ice ball is gonna, because the cold plus the water, could turn things off that I don't want turned off, and could turn things on that I don't necessarily want turned Maybe. on. But that that would be my idea. So you think this is more of a mixer than a standalone? Yeah. Now, this is what's interesting about homebrew, and you've seen us give the same scores on things. You've seen us give disparate scores. This is an example, a six versus a nine. I gave it a nine because I wanted to go 10. I was debating. The reason I didn't is because there's just a tiny, tiny little hint of a bitter note that's a little bit bothersome, but it's not It's not <laughs> bad, but it's we, enough to we keep me from the 10. We are persnickety about the yeah. whole bitter thing, aren't we? It's just, 
just that little bit. I'm not really sure how I'd change it to do that. You know, it could maybe be a touch sweeter, but then that could throw something else off balance. But it's not perfect to me. So this isn't one of the best things I have, but I could totally pour this in a glass on some ice. I would still do it on ice. I think this needs ice and sip it like I would a whiskey. Yeah. It's sure. that kind of a beverage to me. It's a fourth the power of a whiskey. Or third, a little, yeah. It's a fourth. The alcohol. The alcohol. But flavor-wise, flavor, it's up there. It's, it's, it's got that kind of of flavor profile. Yeah. It's amazing. Aggressive is the word aggressive. that's coming to my mind. It's heart. very aggressive. And that's why I gave it a nine, because I think it's got so much going for it. There's so much flavor, so much extra there that, yeah, it's worthy of that high score. And Regardless of the amount of goop sitting in the bottom of the bottle. But it's 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 staying kind of nice yeah, it's, down it's, there. It compacted pretty well. It, it had a year to sit. Sure. And I, because I keep this in a dark storage place and don't look at it again it's until the year the comes up. It is staying the bottle. Um, <laughs> I don't know when that occurred. So I don't know yeah, if we could have let it simply settle out by taking more time before it's bottling. Possible. Or if it really did take that full year to let some of that stuff drop it out. It could still be dropping out yeah, more. We, we don't, don't know. know. Okay, so there was talk of adding some brandy. brandy. Let, me, let me grab my brandy. And today we will be using the good stuff. <laughs> Christian Brothers, 21 bucks of 1.75 liter bottle of brandy. This is what I drink when I don't feel well. Yes. Why do I buy the cheap brandy? Because I'm just not sophisticated enough to know the good stuff. And I like it. And other people have told me that they like Christian Brothers too. I think another reason why you like well, why you buy this is that you do enjoy it. And because most often when you go for this, it's when you're not feeling well. Yeah. So when you're not feeling well, your senses really aren't at the peak of perfection. So yep. I generally drink brandy when I don't, that's why I call it medicinal brandy, like that video. So having a high end brandy when you're sick is probably a waste of the high end. Oh, don't get me wrong. I like cognac. Yeah. I know when I do my rum and Kahlua, it's, almost a half and half. So I'm trying to mix this just right. Going by smell. Got it. Oh. Takes away some of the sweetness. Mm -hmm. Now that's good. See, now put that on ice and you have a beautiful cocktail. It's got a little bit of sweetness. You get a little bit more alcohol kick. It, it turns up the aggressiveness. You need the big brandy snifter. Oh yeah. You need to be sitting in an oversized, over cushioned leather chair in this grand library of like an insane amount of books. Now, and somebody's gonna ask about what do I think the ABV of this is now? If it started out at 13 and this is 40%, I probably used maybe one part of this to four parts of the uh, the other stuff. So uh, that's four times 13 is uh, 52 plus 40 is 92 divided by five, less than 20%. It's still like 18 or 19% ABV, but it did up it significantly. So you could store this really, really nicely. Um, you could even add more brandy if you really wanted to. You could add Everclear if you wanted to, to uh, make it not change the flavor. I, I think that's the route to go. Mm -hmm. That's just super nice. Mm -hmm. Have some more. Thank you. All right. So, in the end, date syrup. Mixed results. Mm -hmm. Some liked it, some didn't. Guess it's one you're going to have to try for yourself and find out. But in the meantime, as always, guys, thank you so much for watching and have a great day. Bye bye.